Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. So today I'm going to compare the texture of a chicken that was cold packed and you'll be able to see the difference on how it looks and a chicken that was hot packed. For any of you that don't know what the difference between cold packed and hot packed is before it gets processed in a pressure canner is that cold pack when you pack the chicken when you pack the meat into the jar it is still raw and you don't add any broth or anything like that the only thing that was inside of this or that's inside of this is raw chicken breast with about a teaspoon of sea salt and that's all it is all these juices are from the chicken when you hot pack a meat product in this case chicken it means that the chicken was already cooked before you put it in the jar and then you continue to fill the jar once you stuffed it with the actual meat you filled the jar up with some broth in this case it was chicken broth the chicken broth that was left over from me cooking the chicken so these two methods yield different results as far as texture goes my favorite way to use this whole pack method chicken is to use it for chicken salad sandwiches and also to use it when I make like a chicken soup, which is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to make a chicken soup. I would say that the texture in this and the soup is more of like the texture that you would find in the chicken when you eat like a can of Campbell's chicken noodle soup. And this right here is more of like a stewy type of a texture, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open each of these. I'm going to pour it in this bowl right here. I'm going to bring it up here so you guys can see so that you can see the texture of it. And then once I'm done showing you the texture of this one, of the cold packed, I wanna take it all, put it in my pot, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the hot packed. Now, as you can see, I've already opened this one, all right? I opened it about an hour or so ago because my wife was headed to work and she had to have a chicken salad sandwich to take to work with her for her lunch. So it's already been opened, but as you can see, these were processed in 2015 both of these and I can already tell you that this one is absolutely fine nothing wrong with it whatsoever it actually tastes great this one right here will open up in front of you all so you can see what it looks like inside right after I open it so this one right here obviously I already opened it it looked good it smelled good and it tastes good and it actually smells pretty good it really does the smell is very similar to the smell that you would find in canned chicken when you buy it at the all right so I'm gonna end up putting all of this in my pot for my chicken soup even the broth that came out of there so I'm gonna dump that first and as you can see the broth is really nice it's nice and clear it's got a little bit of fat in there and we'll see if we can do this without a spoon or a fork and I don't think we will let me go ahead and get a uh, fork so that we can get this out of there all right we got a fork so let's go ahead and Pull these off, and it's very tender, by the way. It's not hard or anything like that. Probably see it trying to shred. And for those of you that do your own pressure canning, ladies and gentlemen, please use your food. Please don't just do it and not ever try it and eat it, because honestly, I think that if you do eat it, you're going to want to do some more because it's so good. So let's go ahead and put this to the side. And I wanna show you what the texture looks like. So, as you can see, the texture is kinda of like layers. You see that? You can just rip it right off. And it's crumbly if you wanna crumble it. All right. So this texture is pretty much the same thing you're gonna find if you buy it in a can at the store. All right, so, Let's come back and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the hot packed chicken. And then if you guys wanna stick around, uh, I'll show you how I make my simple chicken soup for a nice chilly day like today where it's like negative 30 outside. <laughs> All right, so this is probably one of the best things to do. And what I'll do with these meats right here is I'll just, I won't shred them up into tiny pieces. I'll go like this. Just with my hands and I really don't want to put them into tiny pieces or break them into tiny pieces because this adds great texture to your soup 
It's always nice when you're eating some soup and you grab a nice big piece of meat. Unlike the soups that you buy from the store that you're usually digging around your bowl trying to find a piece of meat. Whatever meat it is that the soup has that you bought. So I'm going to leave it just like that. I'm going to put this in my pot and we'll be right back. Alright, so we're back. Now we're going to go ahead and open up our hot pack chicken. So that's what the inside looks like. And it smells just fine. So you can see the inside. The color is a little off from what the bottom looks like. It's because the top is not covered in juice. But there's nothing wrong with it. I smell it. It smells just fine. Actually smells pretty good. Alright, so let's go ahead. I think this one maybe will come out on its own. And it did. And let me go ahead and bring you all down here again like I did with the other one. So I can show you what the texture is like. Because it is pretty different. Okay. So let's go ahead and tear this apart. Now this is a lot more tender than the other one. But you can see that this one's like stringy. You see that? It's stringy and it's not crumbly. But it's extremely tender. And that, and, and ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what. It smells really good. You see that? So this is great to even like make this, heat this up. Maybe put this over rice with some gravy or over potatoes with some gravy, corn or green beans. And this I'm not really going to tear up anymore because it's already so tender that I think that the cooking process will break it down a little more. But this is going to add a lot of good flavor to that soup. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the difference between your, between your cold packed and your hot packed chicken. And both methods have their purposes but you could actually interchange what you use them with like for example i'm using this along with my cold pack chicken to make some soup because both of these meats here provide a different texture and to tell you the truth they both taste really good all right ladies and gentlemen so we're back now this is a very very basic chicken soup all right it, it doesn't need a lot to make it tasty and to make it wholesome. Before we start, however, I want to show you real quick the two cards that I got in the mail this week, Christmas cards. And this is one of them. And this is from, I will say this person's name because she has her own YouTube channel that she just started not too long ago. And that's Life Prepared. So if you guys haven't gone and checked out Life Prepared, go check out her videos. And if you like them, by all means, show her your support by subscribing. And in addition to sending me a card, Life Prepared sent me this. This is a keychain. Uh, I, I call it a keychain lanyard. Right? That way you can always have some 550 cord with you or survival cord with you, wherever you are. And I want to thank you very much, Life Prepared. Right? In addition to that, she does have a video that shows how to make these. And she sent me the material necessary to make our own so that Little Miss Alaska Prepper can take a look at the video and make her own. So thank you very much for that. It's very thoughtful of you, and I truly do appreciate it. Oops, excuse me. So if you guys want to go take a look at Life Prepared's channel, I'll leave the video where she does that up in the, I think it's over here. I don't know. It's either here or here. I'll leave a card there that you guys can click on that and it'll take you to her video where it shows her doing that. And another one here is, I got this other card. Now this is the Christmas card that I told you guys about where the person included a $50 bill, right? That went to a lot of coffees, <laughs> all right? So thank you very much for that to both of you. It is truly, truly appreciated. And Merry Christmas. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm, all I'm going to do now is I'll tell you what ingredients I'm going to use. Very simple. I'm going to use, I, I already put the chicken broth in the pot. I used a half a gallon of chicken broth. You can use whatever chicken broth you'd like. You can use a store-bought chicken broth or a chicken broth that you made yourself. I'm going to include, this is not a science right here. I just grabbed a handful of celery, and this is fresh. So I'm going to go ahead and include about six sticks of celery or stalks of celery. I'm going to include some carrots that I have here. These little carrots that we have. I'm going to cut them up into nice small cubes. And in addition to that, 
I'm going to add about a tablespoon of uh, dehydrated onions to the soup. I'm also going to add about a teaspoon of adobo because you know we have to use adobo. And I'm also going to add about two cups of some leftover white rice that I have from when I made Mr. Tom's meatloaf. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave a link to Mr. Tom's video for that meatloaf because I made the meatloaf exactly as he did, with the exception of one thing. I had to add a little adobo, <laughs> which I did, all right? But it came out spectacular. It's probably the best meatloaf I've ever had, better than the ones I've he made. He uses an ingredient in his meatloaf that I've never seen before. And like I said, I used it. I'm not going to spoil it. I used that ingredient, and it came out splendid. Very, very good. Everyone in my family liked it. And we did have meatloaf sandwiches for like the next two days afterwards, all right? So I'm going to cut this up, cut up my carrots, then I'm going to put them in this bowl, give them a rinse, put them in the, in the soup stock, and then we're going to put it to cook probably for about a good hour, hour and a half. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, now I have all of my vegetables rinsed off. Actually, I have to get a little bit of that water off just a second. All right. Now that I've got my two vegetables rinsed off, what I like to do is I like to put some of my ingredients right on top of it so I can get a good gauge because I don't really... So that's probably about a good tablespoon. And then just a little bit of this adobo, not a lot. There you go, that's about a teaspoon. Now all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my soup, and then I'm gonna let it sit there probably for about a good hour, all right, cooking up. And then towards the end, about 10, 15 minutes before I'm done to take the heat off of it, I'll put my rice in there. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so that's what it's looking like right now. I'm gonna go ahead and put everything in there. As you can see, it's already a little bit warm because I put the heat on real low. I'm going to stir this up. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and leave this just like that for about the next hour or so. I'll probably put it on medium heat so that it can simmer a little bit. And then about, I would say after I check it in an hour, everything should be cooked really well. I'll be able to put some rice in there, leave it in there for about 15 minutes, and then we'll be ready to eat. Now that looks like it's done, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a ladle, put some in a bowl and show you guys what it's like and maybe do a little taste test. Now it's still very hot, ladies and gentlemen, but it does look really good. And it smells really, really nice. As you can see, here's everything. Let me see if I can show you guys the difference between the cold pack all right, so here's your cold packed chicken once it's been cooked in the, in the meat, I mean in the uh, soup. See? Okay, let me find a piece of hot packed chicken and here's your hot packed chicken. There's your hot packed chicken. It's not as crumbly as your cold pack. See that? So if you compare that to your cold pack right there. That's a piece of your cold pack chicken. And there's a piece of your hot pack chicken. As you can see, the cold pack chicken, you can tear it apart. Whereas the hot pack chicken. It's really not as crumbly as the cold pack. See that? I'm pulling on it right now. So let's go ahead and give this a taste. And there you go. That's enough meat to be able to have some meat in every one of your spoonfuls. That's what it looks like. Let's see. 
And I do have to say, ladies and gentlemen, that is very good. I did forget to show you guys me putting the rice in it. But I put about two cups of rice. That's about how much rice was left over from when I made the from when I made Mr. Tom's meatloaf. But there you go. Not too much effort in this as the chicken was already prepared. And all we have to do is chop up a few vegetables and add a few spices to it. And that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you try this. And if you have meats that you pressure can, go ahead and use them. Use them in your everyday cooking. You know, use them when you need to cook something up pretty quick that you don't have time to go through the entire cooking process of the protein or the meat that you're using. And it helps you out by saving you a lot of time. And not only that, it's very tasty. All right? So that's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I've got a lot of people asking me to do the review of the bacon flavored spam or bacon flavored uh, good value or great value luncheon meat which I call Walmart spam I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'm gonna try to find a bacon flavored spam though someone told me that Walmart actually has bacon flavored spam the spam brand so I'm gonna try to find one of those so that I can do a comparison between both of them and then I'm gonna cook up a meal I'm gonna do a recipe with both of those together at one sweet once we test each of them out, right? So having said that, thank you very much for joining in. I hope you enjoyed this and you got something out of this. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper. I'm out.